Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the first Every Planner ever brainstorming session. We're so glad to have you with us tonight. Um, I am Kristen Sanchez, the events executive for Higher Things, and tonight we're going to give you a little behind the scenes look at what it takes to put on a conference to get our plenary sessions ready for this summer. Uh, the plenary is the mass teaching session of the conference. So it's where our pastors come together and teach on the main theme for that summer. And this summer is Forgiven 2021. So I've got all the plenary teachers here with us tonight. Um, and I'm going to introduce them so that you guys know who you are watching. So we're going to start the summer here at North Dakota State University in Fargo, North Dakota. And we're going to be with Pastor Harrison Goodman from Mount Calvary Evangelical Lutheran Church, San Antonio, Texas. And we've also got Pastor Matt Richard. Uh, he is the pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Minot, North Dakota. And the next week, then we're going to be at Colorado State University in Fort Collins, Colorado. And we've got Pastor George Borkhardt, who is the president of Higher Things. He's also the pastor of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Bossier City, Louisiana. And then the Dean of Theology for Higher Things, Pastor Aaron Fanker. He is the pastor of Bethlehem and Emmanuel Lutheran Churches in Bremen, Kansas. After that, we're going to be at Calvin University in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And that is going to be, uh, Pastor Borkhart again is going to be doing a two four for us. And then we've got Pastor Brad Drew, uh, who is from Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Metairie, Louisiana. And then I'm actually going to be admitting our final plenary speaker that we've got on for tonight. Uh, we're going to finish out our season this year in uh, Concordia University in Austin, Texas. And um, down there, we're going to be having uh, Reverend Ron Hodel as one of our speakers, but then coming on right now, under the name of Allison Hall, his lovely bride, we've got Pastor Chris Hall, and he's the pastor at Zion Lutheran Church in Tomball, Texas, and he'll jump on in as he is able to. So we're going to have Pastor Fenker take it away with some guiding some of the discussion so you guys can kind of see how we go about getting this all ready. Pastor Fenker. Well... This is exactly how conferences go. <laughs> this is so awesome. So uh, we're doing forgiveness, which is like good because we're like Lutherans and stuff. So, you know, forgiveness is what we're all about. Um, and well, I was going to let's talk about forgiving and forgetting and how um, God is like the movie 50 First Dates. Do you like that? Do you like that? No, you don't like that. Repeat again. I like that. God, God is like the movie 50 first dates, except he doesn't, it's not, you're not showing uh, reels of like all how awesome, you know, our relationship is. It's just, he gets shown Jesus being crucified for all eternity because Jesus secures eternal redemption as Hebrew says. That's deep. It's, it? it's something. Paul arrives like fashionably late to the party. He stumbles in like he did at my installation. And he's like, yeah, that's deep. Forgiveness is deep. It Thanks, is. Chris Hall. You know, I'm a, a man of dates. few words. Yes. We are stretching the brainstorming part of brainstorming session here a little bit. It's a storm. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll do Reminiscare. Uh, remember, O oh Lord, your uh, your covenant faithfulness for this from old. So what God remembers is his faithfulness and not our sins. He remembers our sins no more. Uh, he remembers our faith. He remembers his faithfulness in the giving up of his son. Is that Kessid? That's a, that's his Kessid, right? Kessid, yeah. Right. All right. So, and I'm gonna mute myself and not talk anymore. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make well, Drew talk and Richard talk because I like that. Listen to them. And Goodman, you're third. Who's first? Drew. Am I first? You. Drew. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Should I just jump in? Jump in. Yes. You know, the, the thought that jumped into my head, George, is you were, you know, talking about God's chesed, God's faithfulness. You know, when they, when they put the blood on the doorposts and the lintels, they saw the blood. That's cool. But the important thing is that God saw it. And God saw it and God remembered his promises. And that's certainly what the Lord means when he says, do this in remembrance of me. And not that remembering a, a dear, dead, departed hero, but that he would remember. He would see the blood and remember his chesed, his faithfulness to forgive. 
very comforting. I'll jump in here. You know, um, when I was in seminary, we had a lot of students uh, from uh, different parts of the world that would uh, come and attend seminary. And uh, one of the seminary students I got to be pretty close with, his name was Potiphar Sawini. Uh, he was from Chad, Africa. And uh, I got to teach him how to use a computer. Uh, I got to teach him all sorts of different things. And we came into, this is now, I went to seminary, uh, you know, before my time in the Missouri Senate in, in a seminary in Minnesota. And I remember the first day of snow, uh, I came into our kind of our student lounge and Potiphar is standing by the door and he's looking out the window and he's crying. And uh, I'm just like, you know, is everything okay? I'm, I kind of panicked. I thought maybe something happened to his family or something like that. And he looks out and he looks out and he sees all the uh, snow and he quotes, was it Isaiah uh, 1, 118? Uh, Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And he, and he looks out and he goes, our sins are white as snow. And, and the, the concept of it is, I mean, if, if, if you're not from the upper Midwest, um, you don't really see how dead things get um, in the fall. Um, fall is nice until about November. And then November, everything dies. Everything's brown. Everything's dirty. Uh, it's very brown, very dirty, very, um, it's just kind of a miserable time that November, December. But when the first snow comes, even though people don't always like the snow, it's a breath of fresh air because it covers everything. It frosts the trees and it's white, it's pure, uh, it's beautiful. And Potiphar got it. He's like, my sins are white as snow because of Jesus. I think that's just brilliant. What do you got for us, Pastor Goodman? Tagging in. So uh, I'm going to go with, with uh, Rima, sorry. Uh, God remembers our sin no more. That's, that's a given for Christ has been crucified. The problem is that we can't forgive and forget. We, we, we say we forgive and then we hold a grudge for forever. Uh, and so when we talk about uh, forgive and forget, that's God working. We need to forgive and remember. We remember that God has been crucified also for our enemy. Uh, we need to remember the crucifix. It, it's a wonderful image that our Lord would give us in uh, the corpus that's hung on the cross. The bare wood is not enough here. Uh, here we actually get to look and see uh, our, our neighbor's sins uh, being forgiven. We can remember the places where justice was paid for those. And so I, I'm not down with forgive and forget for the people. God's real good at it, but I need to forgive and remember my Lord has died for those things. Yeah, that's the... Uh that's the hard thing about like our forgiveness is that we do remember all that stuff. And yet we, it's because we remember the sins attached to that person that's wronged us as opposed to re remembering that those sins were actually like, we, we often think like Jesus died for sins as some sort of abstract idea, but it's like, no, it's literally that thing. That thing is what the blood, of, like Jesus shed drops of blood for that thing that, that was done to you. And that, really um barring any other sort of you know horrible situations we're not always innocent in those relationships um uh, but i guess to kind of round out this thought it is also fascinating that the, you know this jesus this mercy of jesus jesus as the uh, steadfast love of of the lord blows up our ideas of god because human beings, we have all sorts of idols and all sorts of gods that can do all sorts of things. Oh, your God is all powerful, so is mine. Oh, your God can work miracles, so can mine. Oh, your God knows everything, so does mine. It doesn't get us anywhere, but suddenly we have an omniscient God who knows everything and he's like, I forget stuff. And the only thing on his list of things he's forgotten is each and every one of your sins. What do you think about that, Pastor Borkhart? The, the elephant never forgets, except our God does. You know, I'll, I'll, though your sins be like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Um, he has put our sins as far from us as east is to west. I um, mean, it all rests on what I love about the young pup, Goodman. I call him a young pup because he's young, is that uh, he can't talk without, without vomiting out the suffering and death of Jesus. Listen to him as listen, like listening to Isaiah 53 over and over again. Get over it, Matt. No, I'm just kidding. But the, but the point here is that, that, that um, here is a God who saves and doesn't want to damn. Here's a God who sees a guy on a mat, paralytic, on a mat. My text, uh, Drew, my text, 
thinker. The guy sees the guy on a mat. He passes him. He sees the guy on a mat. The guy, everybody in the universe, everybody in the known world knows what his problem is. He's on a mat. He's paralyzed. At another place, they have like opened the roof and like lowered the guy down. And like, I like the homeowner's not like, I wonder if Allstate's going to cover that. Thanks for coming and visiting, Jesus. And, and, and Jesus looks at the guy and he says, chip her up. Be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And now I yield my time to the, the, the gentleman from Texas who is in my screen directly beneath me, uh, Pastor Chris Hall, my good friend, Christopher Hall. So if he needs to unmute Allison, unmute yourself and talk about this text, buddy, because I want to hear you talk about this. I don't know why you want that. That that's crazy. Did it work? Can you hear me? Because nothing yeah. could go wrong when you start talking. No, not, nothing. Goes public wrong. stock goes like this. Yeah, it's just it's it's delightful. Why you start talking? <laughs> the the paralytic is such a beautiful narrative when it comes to absolution. Because. Well, even being paralyzed doesn't make sense because with our forgiveness, we, we do such a good job at trying to bring it back, trying to remember our sin. What I mean by this is, you know, you are absolved your sins, forgiven completely, and yet we, we kind of want to go back to bring ourselves up, that idol of I can make atonement, I can do it better. And paraly being paralyzed shows you you can't do anything. And we all do this. What's the best thing to solve the anxiety, the fear, the worry of your sin are the sweet words of absolution. The pastor putting his hand on you. But how many of us actually do it? How many of us come to that? But we can't. Beautiful part. We're so dumb. We just don't do it. Someone has to bring us to it. Someone brings us to being forgiven, being absolved, being unconditionally loved by God. And it's the Holy Spirit who through our parents, through our friends, through our brothers and sisters, brings us to Christ to be forgiven. The best thing you can hear in a church is, hey, I'm a terrible person. And last week, Pastor Hall or Pastor Daniels or Pastor Finker or someone like that um, told me God loves me. Even though I've done terrible things, let me take you to him and he can help you with that. Stop beating yourself up. Stop hating yourself. You don't have to despair and be dragged down into the dung and dirt of the world. In Christ, you hold your head high, not because you have something to be prideful about, but because Christ has said, there's nothing wrong with you anymore. I've taken care of all of it. It's forgiven. It's absolved. It's not yours to deal with anymore. We can't bring ourselves to hear this. Someone has to it. And that even shows how much God loves us. He sends someone to bring us to that message. What better news can we hear than that? Pastor, Pastor Richard, can you, uh, what are some of your insights on the, the forgiving of the paralytic? Well, you know, maybe... In thinking about it, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still kind of trapped up with uh, what was just said. It was just great, uh, great to consider. You know, the, the whole mindset of 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 how we need the gospel poured into our ears. And, and I've been contemplating a lot lately. Goodman and I were talking about this too, as far as, you know, the effects of sin. And you kind of mentioned this about how, you know, we'll, we'll run from our sin. We'll, we'll, we'll have sorrow from our sin. We'll have shame and fear and anger and, and all these things. And then that leads us to play all these games, right? Um, and the games, what are the games going to be? I mean, we, we blame others for our sin. We deny our sin. We, we, we can even go to substance abuse uh, to deal with this consciousness of error. And so just think about all of the, all the time when we spend, um, all the energy that we spend trying to, to, to subdue or erase this consciousness of error when the gospel's there, you know, you, you know, you're forgiven. It's just a simple word, you know. It's just a simple word, and it's a powerful word. It's it's the as Paul How says. How much would we save on antidepressants? 
Well, yeah, I mean, you think about that. I mean, I mean, and, and we don't talk about it in our culture. We don't talk about our conscience. Uh, you know, my, my friend Brian Wolfmiller talks a lot about this, but but this idea of conscience, you know, we, you know, and, and we don't talk about it. It's, it's in our movies, everywhere we watch, it's in our movies, the guilty conscience. Um, and we see people trying to atone for that by their own works, their own doings and so forth. And, and, and we don't necessarily even call it sin, but we, 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 we are dealing with sin. I mean, it's, it's our culture doesn't use that term sin, but yeah, we have shame, we have fear, we have anger, we have, we, we, we run, um, and then we blame, and then we, we do all these things. Yeah. And substance abuse is another one to numb the consciousness of error and what we're seeking and what we're needing is the, I forgive you. You're forgiven. Uh, it's complete. It's done. Uh, your sins are like snow. Uh, they were once scarlet, but they're white as snow. As far as the east from the west, which if you think about the east and west, you know, they, they, they just keep on going. I mean, there's no end to the east and west. I mean, that's how far gone they are from us. Uh, Pastor Drew, um, by your hand motions, I feel like you were hinting at something. Oh, Could I used you please east and west, the hands on the cross. <laughs> Could you please expound upon that for us? Gift us with that, please. I, I just think of Jesus on the cross with his, his hands as far as the east is from the west. Yeah, but, but, you know, the, the, isn't it interesting that the word uh, for cleanses, as in his blood cleanses us, we get our English word catharsis, which I think is kind of what you guys are touching on. How cathartic the forgiveness of sin is. It's, it is very cathartic. Uh, but the, the, the great joy in all of that is yeah, the, 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 the two parables Jesus speaks on repentance, the lost sheep and the lost coin. There's more joy in heaven. You know, I, I, I'm always learning about positing the joy in us. You know, that, that's a work in progress. It's, you know, yeah, it's, it's some days it's more, some days it's less. But, but the, the important thing is that there's joy in heaven because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have all signed off on the forgiveness. Of, the, the word for forgiveness. Uh, when, when you plow through the New Testament, uh, 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 it, it, it's the same word for when someone's set free, when a prisoner is set free from the shackles. Uh, set free, whatever sin that you see with you, God doesn't see with you anymore. You're severed from it. You're set free from it. Same thing, same thing with your neighbor. You know, whatever sin you see in your neighbor, God doesn't see it. He's it, it, forgiven, set free by the by the blood shedding Calvary. And my joy in that, it's a work in progress. My father's isn't, though. That's that's a guarantee. Pastor Goodman, do you have any final thoughts for the... Um, oh, my goodness. That, that, well, I'm sorry, what was I that? I love that... I said, call it Goodman, man. Goodman's, like, dying to get in. He's like, tag me in! He's like, it's a wrestling match, and he wants to be tagged in. Goodman's, like, dying inside. He's like, tag me in so I can get forgiveness. Right. Look at Thor. I, Thor got so excited that the Goodman was about to talk that he jumped up. Look at him. He's ready to go. They're the dogs waiting for the crumbs which fall from the Goodman's <laughs> table. I love that you went to uh, the the one sinner who repents gets all of heaven singing. Uh, that comes at the end of the text about Jesus seeking the lost, not about the sinner deciding to ask for forgiveness for this thing. Uh, it's the same thing that that our joy on earth is incomplete in the same way that our ability to to go to God for repentance is just non-existent. Rather, He seeks the lost. He puts in us this repentance, and then heaven sings for the work that the Lord has done. Uh, we simply actually just sort of get to have the, well, the liturgy, which is the incomplete joy. We, we, we sing the words, we know the song, we might not always fully see or feel it, but it is most certainly true. And so uh, here we, we get to actually say, I a poor miserable sinner and rejoice to hear in the stat and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. Thank you for that. Uh, 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 Mayor Dean, uh, 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 I may allow it. What, I got a what, question. What is, yeah. So like when I was a young pup and uh, I was hearing about absolution from, uh, from Pastor Anderson, who is Pastor Drew's friend, because um, Pastor Drew is one of my mentors. <clears throat> uh, so uh, when I was hearing about absolution, can a man forgive sins? Uh, Drew has a lot of good things. Michigan is a bad thing about him. Can a man forgive sins? I know that's one of your questions, Pastor, uh, Pastor Brinker. Can a man forgive well, sins? Well, yeah, so, so you, yes. you jump, 
you jumped ahead of me. Oh, I jumped the gun. You jumped the gun because it, I was I was wondering if anybody would bring it up. Uh, but in Matthew 9, Matthew 9 is the key here, uh, paired with Mark 2, uh, because at the end of the, it, we, it's, a, it's a question of authority. And what authority does Jesus have and what authority does he give? Because um, the people in Matthew 9 rejoice that he had given such authority, the authority to forgive sins to men. And in Mark 2, the Pharisees are upset because only God can forgive sins. So uh, why, don't, why don't we let Pastor Drew start us off with this one? <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I, I Actually, can I, can I pull Walter on this? Gift us. You're, you'll, you'll love this. Christ says, whatever ye shall bind on earth, etc. observe that he promises most assuredly that what we, we italics, what we bind or loose on earth shall be bound or loosed. These keys work without a fault. He does not say whatever I bind or loose in heaven, you shall also bind or loose on earth as the teachers of the faulty keys foolishly assert. When would we learn what God binds or looses in heaven? Never. Well, then the keys would be useless and their application futile. Nor does he say you must, I must say, you must know what I bind or loose in heaven. Who would know that? But this is what he said. Bind and loose on earth and I shall bound and loose with you in heaven. Do the work of the keys, and I shall do it also. Whatever sins you forgive, as, as, as if they're the keys of heaven, not the keys of earth. Right? As if the keys that you and I operate are, are different somehow than the keys that are up there. They're not, they're not. They're the same. We have the keys of heaven here, so when I absolve you, that's it. End of discussion. I think I think I think our hymnal. I mean, the the individual confession and absolution. I love this part on, on page two ninety three in the very top. It says, "Do you believe this is this is the pastor speaking to the parishioner? Do you believe that my forgiveness is God's forgiveness? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe." The pastor then places his hand on the head of the penitent and says, "I just just love this. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen." Um, that's that's just it's just it's remarkable. I mean, and I was having a conversation earlier today with the individual about how that uh, individual confession and absolution, how how important it is, uh, especially for those sins that keep us up at night. You know, those sins that cause us to turn, um, the the ones that we're always looking over our shoulder on, uh, the ones that we uh, have those skeletons in our closet, and we just say, oh my goodness, I hope I hope my mom and dad don't find out, or I hope you know my future spouse doesn't find out. Those those sins that haunt us. Um, you know, we run from them and we feel that pressure. It's like, you know, somebody looking over our shoulder, but when we go right before boldly, before the throne, uh, before, before that altar in, in the sanctuary and we confess to the pastor and the pastor absolves, um, it's done. It's complete it's right there. And so I, you know, I had a privilege a while back, uh, individual, uh, later in life, uh, in, in, in the hospital, and I'm, you know, obviously not going to reveal the sin that was being talked about, but, but the content is, is, is remarkable. They, they were in the hospital bed and the devil went to work on them, digging out those old sins, you know, that were forgiven and they brought them out. And I remember actually using a very, very angry voice. I'm like, um, no, your sins are forgiven and to use it with authority and to proclaim that gospel. They were forgiven. They were there. They're forgiven for Christ's sake. It's done. We're, we're not going there. And there's almost a forcefulness with that, that forgiveness, an aggression with it. And uh, just to see that faith uh, strengthen the individual saying, yeah, you know, you're right. You know, uh, go to hell, Satan. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in Jesus. I'm forgiven. Uh, take it up with Christ. Pastor Hall, would you uh, continue to comfort us with the authority that uh, you have as a pastor to forgive sins? Ah, thank God for it. Because if it was up to me, I wouldn't forgive anybody. <laughs> you know, I mean, I struggle with forgiving people. I'm a sinner. I don't want to forgive you. If you gossip about me, I'm going to make up a rumor that's worse to get you back. If you talked about my family, I'm going to talk about yours. You know, if you cut me off in traffic, I'm going to speed so I can get in front of you and look at you weird, you know, and make you feel bad. You know, I'm going to do these things. Thank God for the keys, because if it was Chris Hall forgiving you, it would never happen. You know, maybe if I was George Pastor Bohod, it would, because he's a very saintly person. Um, 
I think, I don't know. No, that was wrong. That was false. I shouldn't have said that. I'll go to my father confessor and ask for forgiveness for lying. But the reality is when we ask, do you believe the forgiveness I speak is not mine? But God, they say, yes, because I believe right now you're doing Christ's work. You're not doing your own thing. You're not forgiving me because it's going to get you ahead in life. Because that's why we forgive people sometimes, right? Well, I'll forgive you because I don't want to anger you too much. I want to get past this. I want to get through this. And I want you to like me. So I'm going to forgive you so I can have a better relationship with you and I can get ahead. That's not why you're being forgiven. You're being forgiven right now because on the cross, and this is the best thing you imagine it. You don't have to imagine it because it happened on the cross, Christ knew from the moment of conception to the moment of death, every one of your sins, every mistake, every failure, every wish I wouldn't have had, every wish I would have, everything he knew before you were even born, while you were still being his enemy, he knew it. So when I ask you that for that question, you believe my for, the forgiveness I speak is not mine, but God's, you say, yes, you are saying, thanks be to God that he has given such a great gift to freely forgive me without any thought of what he's getting out of it. <laughs> it's awesome. solely by grace, That's awesome. according to him. Mr. Fun T, time. Mr. T, I have a question. Yeah. I once heard a sermon from my past, the same sermon from uh, my dogs decided that he wants to hate, hate his neighbor. But I once heard a sermon from Brad Drew, okay? Where, uh, don't, don't get scared, buddy. It's all good. It's going to be all right. Just, just, just hold on and enjoy the moment. We're going back too many years. We, <laughs> is this true? Is this true that we could stand before God and we can actually say to God, Pastor Chris Hall, absolve me of my oh, yeah. sin. He's my and if you want to bring it up, mm -hmm. you take it up with Jesus. All right. Because, because my pastor Hall absolved me of that sin. If you want to take it up, you want to talk about it. We, we teach our, our, our vacation Bible school. Jesus loves me. This I know for my pastor tells me so. You, Absolutely. You. <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, could I, could I jump back in just for a quick second on, on, on the authority business? Go because, for it. Because the, 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 the text in Matthew gets us so beautiful. You know, the, 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 he, he absolves the, the fellow of his sins. You know, and they're all looking at their watches thinking they, they can spend their time better. Then he says, get up and go home. But then they all glorify and marvel God who had given such authority to men. And the Holy Spirit wants us to hear that the authority to forgive sins has been granted to men. And, 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 then, and then in the Catechism in John 20, as the Father sent me to absolve, so I send you. And he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. And they then go out with that very authority. If they forgive, whatever they forgive, the Father says, I'm doing that too. Well, I mean, in Matthew 9, it's a preview of Matthew 28, actually, because it's, it's the same authority, right? It's the same word that uh, it's Easter ahead of time, Calvary ahead of time, last day ahead of time, because the authority, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And what does Jesus do with it? Well, he tells them to baptize and to teach so that they would make disciples. But um, in Matthew's gospel, the authority is also given to men so that they can forgive sins on earth. And so that as, you know, as there is nothing new under the sun, I have also, I've gotten in trouble for it, for saying this, that to say that you can go to God and be like, you have to forgive me. You have to, because my pastor forgave me, or I've been baptized or pick, pick the gift. But we always get hung up on it when it comes to the absolution, because, you know, it's probably because maybe our people don't like us so much. <laughs> Well, we're sinners. Well, it's it's the same thing. Go for it, thing. Goodman. Go it's for it. No, thing no, that no, 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 no. It's no, no. Goodman's you turn. Heart. It's Goodman's turn. Oh, I like Goodman, Goodman better. Turn. I like Goodman better. I'm Me gonna too. shut up. I, I don't blame them. We're we're sinners. Uh, I I hear it actually more than a little bit. Uh, this this hesitancy to accept an absolution, the same as you would accept uh, baptism, because well, that water is relatively clean water mixed with God's word, but we are poor, miserable sinners who are told to speak it. And so more often than not, it, people say, who can forgive sins but God alone? I'm pretty sure it's in the Bible. And they forget that they're quoting the, the Pharisees. Uh, God does use authority uh, and he uses it for the good of 
our neighbor. The, the reason that we sort of struggle with this is because if a sinner has authority over me, he'll probably abuse it. And that's really where so much of the absolution is attacked by the devil. Uh, rather, God would uh, give us this, this authority uh, so, that, so that we would serve our neighbor. Uh, for Christ, who had all authority, served us by his death upon the cross. Borkhart, tag in. Thanks, buddy. Um, I like Goodman, too. Um, this is the same thing. that This is the, the utter scandal of the gospel. And I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to yield my time to the, 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 general, the gentleman from Texas. Um, this, this utter scandal, where Luther says, he, he, you can stand at the pearly gates, and you can look in, and you can go, is Jesus in there? Because if Jesus is alive in there, then, then, then he's got my seat. You know, if Jesus is alive in there, then I'm saved too. And now I leave the, re the re remainder of my time to the gentleman from Tejas, the Republic. I, li I like that, Pastor Bogart. Jesus is in there. It's, it's nice. It's not nice. It's real. It's true. Everything that is Christ's is ours, and all that is ours is Christ's, right? Luther says this in the Galatians lectures when he talks about Galatians 3.13. Uh, you know, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. That means on the cross he became Peter the denier, Judas the betrayer, Saul the persecutor, Cain the murderer, Rahab the prostitute, David the adulterer, you know, he became Chris, the lazy pastor who ignores his parishioners' phone calls. And we all do this. No pastor can ever say, oh, I always answer. No, you don't. You take time and ignore because you're a bum sinner too. We all do it. The reality is on the cross, Christ claimed it all. He said, every single one is mine. So when the devil comes knocking on your door to rub your face in your sin, you say, it is Christ's. And he nailed it to the cross. I bear it no more. It's his. And everything that's his is mine. I can't be separated from him. But the world tries to get me to forget that. The devil tries to get me to forget that. My old Adam forgets it. So that's why you have your pastors. And more than just your pastors, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Our one job is to do one thing, to be a broken record that says every day, in the stead of Christ, I forgive you all your sin. May the devil be silenced, the world be hushed, and the old Adam drowned anew. That you can hear only the voice of Jesus who says, I love you, I forgive you, and you are mine forever. And nothing's going to change that. Praise the Lord for that. All right. Well, I think we're getting close to time. So I, I just wanted to, one final thought that popped into, oh, okay, we'll let Pastor Richard talk. Tag Pastor Richard, and then I'll have my final thoughts. Uh, you know, I was just thinking about how, how much is, as uh, was being shared there, how much threat forgiveness can be for people who want to use it to shame and manipulate and control people. Um, you think about this, you know, the, the, this idea that, you know, we, we do a wrong, right. And then we spend, or especially like, let's just say we do a wrong towards a parent or to somebody, a loved one. And, or maybe we've grossly offended somebody in society, then, then they, they will use that to hold it, especially in small town culture, they'll hold that on you and they'll attach that label to you and they'll define you by that sin and they'll shame you by that sin. And they use it as a way to manipulate you uh, to ever, to somehow work towards your own atonement to satisfy it, but they never let you be satisfied of that sin and they can use it to control. And the freedom of the gospel where um, the opinion of mankind, you know, of my, my, my fellow sinner uh, who doesn't have the authority to do that and the authority of the gospel, the authority of, of the absolution, how that sets me free from uh, this word bondage, right? The bondage to my fellow mankind who wishes to shame and guilt me and manipulate me through my past sins. Uh, so once we confess it and it's absolved, uh, we're free. Uh, and there's a freedom of conscience. There's a freedom of, of, of not um, having to always look over your shoulder, like I said, to the skeletons of the closet, but also to appease a shame-based system of somebody else or, or a manipulation or peer pressure or so forth that comes from the outside. Uh, then, then, then it brings us to the point of remembering our baptism, who we are, um, and, and having one God and uh, uh, living on his authority and his freedom. Amen to that. Yeah, the, uh, the problem is we, we as sinners abstract everything. We abstract everything so we can control it. 
And it's not just controlling others. It's about controlling our uh, God too. And so we, we, we make baptism all about, you know, well, I, it's my thing. Communion's my thing. Um, and so this is where we run into, we abstract the gifts from the delivery system that God himself instituted, which isn't just pastors. It's all Christians. All, like it's, there's only one forgiveness. There ain't two forgivenesses. And, and it, it drives me bonkers. I mean, we, we, we use two different terms just to help sort of make sense of kind of what happens that, you know, the pastor speaks absolution and Christians speak forgiveness. However, we need to realize that the authority to forgive sins, I mean, it is the scandal that Jesus is one forgiveness blasts through all sins in everyone's daily life. If you have sins, your neighbor is literally there, your Christian brother and sister, Jesus put them there so that you would hear from them, I forgive you. And if their word isn't good enough, well, you're, Jesus gave you a pastor so that you would have faith in him, so that you would have faith in Jesus, this, uh, that we would obtain faith. Jesus instituted the office of the ministry uh, of, of preaching the gospel, administering the sacraments so that the Holy Spirit, because he works through those. And the Holy Spirit works through your neighbor too, through all of us in words that don't just change. They don't just change the universe. Like Jesus's words, take your bed up and walk. That changes the guy's life. The words that as pastors were given to speak and all Christians are given to speak, change people's eternity in a moment. In a moment that someone has sinned against you and they're sorry, even if they're not sorry, change their eternity. Why does it matter? Why not, why not be like Jesus? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. I'm pretty sure they know what they did. But Jesus forgives them anyway. He dies for them anyway. And Jesus puts all of us together as the body of Christ so that we receive from him and that he would, we would then be his instruments so that um, we're like the, we're like the key chain that Jesus uses, uh, to unlock, uh, sins, to, uh, to free people. I don't have anything else right now. Oh, I think we're out of time. Are we out of time? You guys. Yes. But thank you. I want to thank you guys so much for this. Thank you so much for letting us in a little bit to see what goes into this planning. And I don't know, maybe this is going to be the best planned conference plenary season there's ever been because we did this a little bit. But man, thank you guys so much. For those of you out there watching at home, I hope you this uh, gave you a little bit of excitement for the summer. We want to see you in North Dakota, in Colorado, in Michigan, in Texas. Come join us for conferences. Go to higherthings.org slash events, and you can find out all the information on how to register. We know you want more of this gospel, so please 